So normally what I would do is I would show you how to make the thing and then I would show you the test, but then I realized that that's dumb. Uh, so instead, I'm gonna show you the test first so you guys know for a fact before you even watch the build that this armor performs. This armor performs better than a, 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 a crying actress in a political ad. Children. For our communities. For our communities. For our communities. For America. For America. For America. <laughs> uh, not, it may be the toughest of marks to beat, but, um, the armor is very good, I promise. So yeah, here's the $30 uh, bullet resistant armor test and then build, hope you guys enjoy it. All right, moment of truth. We've got a nine millimeter Springfield XDS. Wow. That actually worked perfectly. There's hardly any bulge on this side. Yeah, that worked way better than I thought it was going to. Now we're going to do another nine millimeter uh, just with a slightly longer barrel. Uh, nine millimeter Springfield XD. Almost the exact same, just a slightly a little bit more of a bulge right there. But this is looking really, really good right now. Now comes the part of the show where we just destroy it. I'm going to do some double odd buck, maybe a slug, and then I'm going to hit it with the AR. All right, just for fun, we're going to start out with bird shot. We seasoned it a little bit, but obviously nothing came out the back. It's just bird shot. Now let's get serious, double on buck. Wow. That's amazing. So if you're so lucky that every single one of the uh, buckshot pellets hits the armor, then I guess you'd be relatively safe. Um, you'd probably bruise a rib or something, but that's actually pretty good. But I think we're done with encouraging results. We're gonna go with a slug now. Nice shot, mate. <laughs> I think he's done for. Wow. I stopped it. I mean, you're gonna be on your butt after that, but jeez, I did not expect that. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> Look at the dent in the sandbag. I mean, that's, that's gonna be your ribs, but you might survive it. And I mean, this for 30 bucks, that's not bad. It's pretty cool. AR? Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll try one, uh, five, five, six, and then we're just gonna unload into it until we get the result that we've been looking for. All right, I've got a Wyndham AR-15 with the red dot sight, uh, firing five, five, six, obviously. That was an inch and a half above the bottom. Oh, really? Okay. Center. Aim towards the top. Three inches from the top. You mean above it? No, three inches from the top. Oh, okay. that I was just gonna fire one time. <laughs> it's too fun. <laughs> then you wanna with the plate still? Dude, I would like contact the military and be like, I got something you want. <laughs> I'm a little bit yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw the smoke puffing out of the back. Yeah, sorry, you're not walking away from that. Most anything that comes out of a shotgun, you're not gonna get poked by. But yeah, you're not you're not safe from the AR. Overall though, I'm really, really excited about how this worked out. I was I thought the shotgun was just gonna tear it to pieces, but it it held its own. 
really, really well. Not bad, huh? Now, clearly you can see a bit of delamination on the sides right there, but as you saw in the video, it stopped everything except the 5.56. And being that 90% plus gun murders in the United States are done with handguns, that's pretty good. All right, so here's making it. I filmed this thinking that I was gonna do the build first and then the test, so if it seems a little weird, it's because it is. But I think the point will get across pretty okay. Today, I'm making the most cost-effective bullet-resistant armor that I personally have ever seen anybody make. I'm not saying no one's ever made any cheaper, but I haven't seen it. And I'm gonna be achieving that, hopefully, with fiberglass. I was originally hoping that I could get some Kevlar fabric and use fiberglass resin on that to make some hard body armor, uh, but it was a little too expensive. And possibly the coolest thing out of all this, $10 for the resin, $20 for the blanket, $30 bullet resistant armor that could possibly save your life one day. I don't know if you can beat that. I'd be impressed. So let's get started. Now, as of right now, I'm not actually in need of any body armor. I've got some level three plates here from Spartan Armor. Just keep in mind, I'm not liable for anything that happens while you're wearing this stuff. I'm making it to be bullet resistant, but that does not mean it is. Just be smart, okay? So first I'm gonna have to mark out my cuts on the fiberglass. I'm actually gonna use the level three plates as like a stencil for that. Oh, by the way, whoever sent me this heater. Thanks. I mean, it doesn't come anywhere close to heating up the garage, but putting it on the table right here where I can just put my hands in front of it at any time. Oh my gosh, it makes a universe of difference. Anyways, so I'm gonna open this up. Wow, this is a lot. So I got the fiberglass laid out. I'm just going to do some rough markings for some rough cut. I can tell just from the way this thing is woven, it is not gonna behave very well. Once I cut it apart, it's gonna start fraying and stuff. So we're gonna cut with about an inch on both sides. And once we have all the resin cured and everything, then we're just gonna cut the edges off. Second row. Now I'm gonna cut it out. Oh, I can already see this is gonna be bad. You just gotta be really, really gentle with this stuff or it is gonna go everywhere. It is just totally popping apart. We can do this though, I really, really do think we can. Hold on, you gotta see this. See how the weave just like totally pops open when I cut it? Now, I'm actually gonna use these things as the form for the plate as well. I'm gonna wrap each of them individually with packing tape to give them a waterproof layer so we don't mess them up with the resin. All right, usually do this resin in small batches because if you do giant batches, it hardens really, really quick. So it said like a quarter of this can would be a quarter of this tube. All right, gotta work quick. All right, this goes on top. Try as best as I can to line it up with the one on the bottom. Just kind of feel around. And I'm going to clamp the two plates together really, really tight. Tight enough that if there's any dry spots in any of the layers on the edges of the plate, compressing it is gonna force resin from another layer into that layer and fill in the gap.
All right, this is an entire can of resin, and this is a lot of surface area to be drying. Coupled with the center part right here not being exposed to any oxygen at all. I hate to say it, but this is going to take a few days to cure, so I think I'm going to have to leave this until I get back from my trip. Gosh, I was really hoping that I would be able to get this finished today. Oh well, at least I got something to look forward to when I get back. I still really do think this is going to work. Like you can see here, the resin is like gushing out from the edges. That shows that it's really squeezing it out and spreading it around. So, see you in a few days. <laughs> I am so envious of the fact that your wait time for this was a one second transition slide. Ugh. Meanwhile, I just got scoliosis from an 18 hour car ride from here to New York back to here. It could be worse though. I could work at Chipotle. What a joy this is. How are we gonna do this? Where's my scraper? There we go. Ooh, that looks nice. Huh? Huh? If I can get this trimmed out nice, this could look pretty good. There we go. This guy moaned at least this loud. It's not super heavy. I'd say it weighs eh, about as much as a fiberglass blanket and like maybe a can of resin. Just a rough estimate. plates are really untouched. Well, aside from where the clamps were kind of squishing into the rhino liner on this thing, but I don't think that will really affect it at all. So using plates as a form, good. All right, now here's the fun part, AKA probably the worst thing I'll ever experience. I've got to try to cut this thing out. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do this. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to cut away the loose soft stuff with a razor blade and then I'm gonna go at it with a jigsaw and see how that works. And if I can just cut away enough that I can get the jigsaw into here. I think that'll be enough. I got a pretty clear path right here. Let's do work. And really quick, if you're unfamiliar with the properties of fiberglass, all you really need to know about it is that it's the worst thing in the whole entire world and avoid working with it at all costs. But it would be pretty difficult for me to make some bullet resistant fiberglass armor without any fiberglass. So if you're gonna do this, just make sure you have gloves, you wear long sleeves, you got something that will protect your face and make sure that you're not breathing something in. Uh, actual breathing protection would be ideal. But since I'm not using a rotary tool, this should be fine. This should be interesting, let's do it. As expected, this is getting rough. Man, I wish I had a sawzall. Hmm. Oh, let's try something else.
Oh my gosh, I have a bandsaw. still ugly so I'm gonna clean up the edges of it sorry if I don't sound super enthused right now it's pretty late as it is and I got to get up at 6 30 to drive two hours to the gun range anyways I'm gonna use a belt sander to clean up the edges It's not perfect, but it looks a heck of a lot like an armor plate. A little cleanup with a sanding sponge. And there it is, I guess. Wow, this actually turned out pretty nice. I'm, I'm shocked. Well, that's about all I got for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed, 